Boom! Welcome back to the Seb Show, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Sebs. And today we are previewing UFC Fight Night 114. Brandon Moreno, or I should say, Sergio Pettis versus Brandon Moreno. Um, This is actually... A lot of people are, are saying this is the worst card of the year. Might have to agree with you, actually, looking at it, top to bottom. Not a terrible card, not horrible, but um, the cards they've been putting up recently have been real, re really, really, really good. Real good, but uh, yeah, this one, uh, compared to the other cards they've been putting up recently, uh, is, is not that good. Um, but nevertheless, they... Nevertheless, sorry, uh, they do have um, some some up and coming names, I would say, and uh, some names to watch out for. Some good fighters on this card, and uh, we'll be breaking it down, my bets and whatnot. Uh, quick shout out goes to uh, MMA Kelton, uh, UFC Bro Picks Justin, and uh, Ricky as well, Will Martin. Um, Dan Levy at Half the Battle, the MMA Genius, uh, Rockstar Z, Lucha Bone, if I'm forgetting anybody, let me know, but, uh, sorry about that if I'm forgetting anyone, but let's get on and let's break down this card, uh, honestly, to be honest, I didn't do, uh, a bunch of tape study on a whole bunch, uh, the tape study on... Yeah, not a whole bunch of these, relatively enough, but like probably I'm missing like probably four. <laughs> Sorry for that, guys. But um, had to clear my fucking throat. But uh, let's get started here. Alvora Herrera versus Jordan Rinaldi. Um, start up with Alvora here. Uh, trains out of Jackson Wink MMA. He's coming off that submission loss to Vicente Luque at uh, UFC uh, Fight Night uh, 90. Uh, those annuals versus Alvarez. So that was quite a bit ago. That was, if I'm correct, that is over a year ago. So, uh, and then before that, he got a knockout within 30 seconds of Vernon Ramos. Um, he's, what is he? He's, so he's one and one in his UFC, uh, his UFC uh, reign here, and he's fighting Jordan Rinaldi. Jordan Rinaldi is uh, definitely no slouch. Uh, last last fight was against uh, Abel Trujillo uh, at uh, Thomas Almeida versus Cody Garbrandt a while ago. Um, he lost that fight. <coughs> Sorry, guys. He lost that fight. Uh, holy fuck, that one sounded bad, eh? He lost that fight, but uh, it was the, a unanimous decision. He, he, he pretty much got grinded out in that one. but uh, And picked apart by uh, Abel Trujillo. Uh, before that, he, he was um, fighting at Fight Lab and then Legacy and all these other Play World Series, RFA... Um, so this, he, he's been injured for quite a bit, um, he's also on a year layoff, Jordan Rinaldi, and this is his first, his second fight in the UFC, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, Jordan Rinaldi here though, I do see him winning this via decision, uh, didn't do too much tape study here, I just think he gets enough takedowns to, uh, to secure the victory though. Uh, we'll go 29-28 decision for uh, Jordan Rinaldi. Next up, we got uh, a fight I'm actually... I didn't bet on... Actually, I think I... Yeah, I did bet. I have a little play on this. Give me one second, I swear. Yeah, I had to fix the mic, but um, I do have a little play on this, guys. Uh, jo Joseph Morales is a prodigy of uh, Uriah Faber, trains out of Team Alpha Male, has been uh, training or as known 
uh, your eye favorite since he was 10 years old. He's been like wrestling for a long, long time. Very good jiu-jitsu, very good wrestling, good, great ground and pound. Um, good, very good stand-up. Um, lots of like submission knockouts and knockouts on his record. Mostly submission, so um, can grind you out as well. Very, very good. And then we got Roberto Sanchez uh, fighting out of Legacy, I believe. Um, Roberto Sanchez is a fucking talent on the floor. This is this is a top quality f- fight, man. Uh, I put I put put a can't even fucking talk. Put a player on the over uh, here. I think it's over. It's gonna go over one and a half rounds, I believe so. And uh, I do have that for what a point two five units with uh, something later in the card to win point two nine units. But um, yeah, man, this is a great a great fight. If it hits the floor. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Roberto Sanchez is, um, I think, I'm pretty sure he's a black belt, a Gracie black belt. I know he trains out of Gracie Barra in Houston. Um, his last, uh, he, he's been fighting for Legacy for a while, but uh, he got, he has a one decision in his last one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven in his last seven fights, he he has one decision. So he's seven and zero, oh, one decision win, uh, six submissions, and his submissions come quick. They come, uh, one for one minute and forty seconds within the first round, fifty four seconds within the first round. Uh, some of them a little bit late. This one's four twenty five minutes of the like the end of the third round. Uh, like just quick submissions all 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 around. Um. But I, uh, I, I don't know what to expect for this one. I do think it goes over one and a half rounds, though. Uh, I know both of them have finishing ability, but I, I, I think the scoring all three rounds, guys. But uh, with my final pick, I'll go with uh, Roberto Sanchez. I think. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll go with Roberto Sanchez here. I think he's, uh, he's, he's very good on the. This is this is actually a tough one. Actually, I'm gonna have to switch it up to Joseph Morales really quick. I think Joseph Morales is uh, better on the feet and is gonna be able to contain Roberto Sanchez a little bit on the ground. So uh, not super confident in this pick. Uh, very confident. In <coughs> I say pretty rather confident in the over rounds, but uh, I do like Joseph Morales to win this against Roberto Sanchez via unanimous decision. So, moving on from Fight Pass to uh, the prelims here. <coughs> Sound like over here I'm dying, guys. <coughs> Holy fuck. So many big bong hits. Fuck. Um, so, we got Diego Rivas versus Jose Alberto Quinones. We'll start with Rivas. Rivas is taking a bit of a layoff, training out of Kings MMA. Um, he hasn't fought in a year and a bit, but his last fight was um, Noah Ladat, and it was quite a knockout. It was a flying knee, if I believe. Well, like it was, it was something crazy. I remember that, but uh, I remember he 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 pretty much fucking tore him apart. Noah Ladat. Um, in the second round, that was beautiful. And before that, he fought um, Rodolfo Rubio Perez, and he, uh, he he won that in a decision victory, unanimous decision. And he lost against uh, Gabriel Benitez in the Tough Latin America season one. And then you got Jose Quinones. Um, Jose Quinones. And by the way, I think. Yeah, Diego Rivas is the, uh, I'll get all the odds for you guys right now, actually, we'll go get all the odds real quick. So, the odds for the last one was minus, uh, two, th- well, we'll go to my book. Minus 203 for Rinaldi, uh, plus 178 for Herrera, uh, and I chose Rino- Rinaldi. This one is, and then, uh, minus minus. Uh, 131 for Roberto Sanchez, plus 116 for Morales. 
I do like Morales in that underdog spot. And then this one is plus 187, Diego Rivas. Uh, minus 213 for Jose Quinones. And I can see why he's definitely the more active fighter. Um, this is a tough one to call, guys. Is, like, just because of uh, the activity, I think. I think uh, Diego Rivas is actually the better striker overall, the better fighter overall. Um, he's moving down to bantamweight, I believe, for this fight. I think that's, yeah, he's moving, and he was, he's originally featherweight. I don't know how that weight cut's going to treat him, something that scared me off of this a little bit. But, um, yeah, um, Jose Quinones only has one loss in the UFC to Alejandro Perez. Other than that, he, he's, uh, choked out Morales and, uh, B. Gomez, and this is his, his next test. But this is a tough one. Revis is going to be tough to take down. I know a lot of guys are saying Jose Quinones is going to have to take down a lot. I, I see Rivas actually taking him down more. I think Rivas gets the win here, 29-28. I, I think he has more power on the feet as well, um, being the bigger guy. And I see him getting the win here. So let's go to Henry Briones versus Ronnie Yaya. Um, just going to skim over these fights really quick, guys. Ronnie Yaya is a fucking... He, he's very dangerous on the floor. Let's just put it like that. Very dangerous on the floor. Um, his last fight was against Joe Soto. Uh, lost decision. He beat Tanaka. He's lo he beat uh, Matthew Lopez with a nasty choke. Uh, he he he's pretty fucking dangerous <clears throat> on the floor. And then we got Henry Briones here. And uh, Henry Briones is tough as fuck too. He's coming off back to back losses from uh, Cody Garbrandt and uh, Douglas Andrade. Uh, he's been hurt for quite a fucking bit too. He hasn't fought in um, a little bit under a year there. Probably eight months or so. Uh, seven months, yeah. So he hasn't fought in about seven months' time. Um, I know Henry Briones, or Enrique Briones, whatever the fuck his name is, but uh, he, he is a tough guy. But I think Ronnie Yaya, if he gets this to the floor, it's game over. He definitely has the advantage on the floor, way better on the floor. On the feet, uh, he, it's going to be tough to hang with him for a little bit, but uh, he, I think Ronnie Yaya will be able to hang with Henry Briones on the feet for a little bit and uh, eventually take him down and choke him out. And the second round, second round submission for Ronnie Yaya. Um, what are the odds here? 157. Minus 157 for Ron Yaya. Plus 139 for Briona. So uh, Ron Yaya is the favorite. And I think uh, he deserves that. But uh, let's move on. Dustin Ortiz versus Hector Kid Alex Sandoval. And uh, a lot of people are ready to, to write off. My dog's barking sounds like an underdog, but too bad for him. I'm going with uh, Dustin Ortiz. I have 0.25 units on uh, Dustin Ortiz. Um, I just think he's he's not shot as people think. Sorry, I'm just looking over it. Yeah, I have 0.25 units and somebody later in the card to win uh, 0.27 units. But I don't think Ortiz is as shot as people think he is. Um, I think he's still a very good grappler. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. Kid Alex, I know he's coming off that nice win of Matt Schnell. Um, looks very impressive in doing so. I had Matt Schnell all day in that. And uh, he burned my ass. Hector Sandoval did. But he's fighting a tough veteran in Dustin Ortiz. And uh, I think Dustin Ortiz is looking at the better of the grappling exchanges. Uh, Hector Sandoval, I think, is still... Uh, Still a little bit green, even though he's the older of the two. But I think he's still a little bit green. He hasn't had that much uh, UFC experience. And uh, the odds are minus 208 for Dustin Ortiz, plus 183 for Hector Sandoval. Uh, so I did take Ortiz and somebody later in the card for uh, to win 0.27 units, 0.25 units to win 0.27 units. So I do like Dustin Ortiz, 30-27 uh, decision over Hector Sandoval. Next is Jack the Joker Hermanson versus Bradley Bear Scott. 
and uh, Jonathan Manson. I do have a couple plays on him. I, uh, the play I was just recently talking about, Ortiz, so I have 0.25 units Ortiz and Hermanson to win 0.27 units. 0.25 units uh, over rounds for Sanchez and um, sorry, Sanchez and Morales and Hermanson to win 0.29 units. Then I got Hermanson and somebody or something uh, over rounds to win 0.87 units. One unit. And uh, one unit to win 0.87 units, and then I got something else 1.25 units over rounds, uh, slasher Manson to win 1.58 units. So I do uh, favor the Swede here quite a bit, or the Swede or Norwegian, I don't know what to call him. Uh, Jack Manson is is legit. Um, let's get to. Oops, I, sorry, guys. He's uh, super light on his feet, switches stances a lot, which is something I like against a flat-footed uh, Bradley Scott. Serious power in his hands. He's really good on the ground. He's a well-timed takedowns, and he's very heavy when he gets those takedowns. Very heavy on top, top, good ground. Uh, he's got some good ground and pound, good uh, control on top. Uh, Times the strikes very well. Crisp combos and uh, box uh, with his boxing uh, and... With his boxing, it's beautiful, in and out of the pocket. He uses the oblique kick very well, and he has very good dirty boxing in the clinch. Great cage wrestling, very heavy uh, when he is wrestling you against the cage, and great strikes in the clinch. Uh, knees, elbows, boxing combos, uh, you name it. Good sidekicks and really nice footwork and movement. I see him just really outpacing Bradley Scott here, who seems to fade after the first round. Uh, Jack Hermanson does get a little bit tired in the, when he starts to grapple, but uh, I see him this, this being a striking matchup, and Jack Hermanson go 15 minutes no problem with a striking matchup, and I think, think he picks apart uh, Riley Scott, and if it goes to the grapple, he exchanges uh, Jack Hermanson all day. But uh, Riley Scott does have some good boxing. He's flat-footed, power in his right hand. All right, box. He's got good box in the pocket. Doesn't put together combinations. Throws heavy single strikes instead. Good work in the clinch. He's sloppy and wild with his strikes. With hard uh, low kicks, is very telegraphed low kicks. So I have Hermanson all day here, guys. Uh, I think this is the second round knockout for Jack Hermanson. Um, I do favor him quite a bit here, guys. I got 2.75 units overall on him. And I do favor, like I said, I do favor quite a bit. Second round knockout. So let's move on to the main card. We got Alejandro uh, Turbo Perez versus Andre Sukant. Uh, I can never say his name. <clears throat> the Asian sensation, though. And uh, I, this one was hard to call. I was, uh, until uh, a few days ago, I learned that uh, the Asian sensation still hasn't left the Mexico City. He probably did now, obviously, but. Uh, when it was like Monday or Tuesday, he was still like in America, which is uh, a problem. When you're going to Mexico City, that elevation is going to play a key part. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but um, that's going to play a key part. Um, not much to say here, guys. I do favor Alejandro Perez just because of that. I think he gets the win. Uh, yeah, moving on. Yeah, he's overall as well too. I think he he's he has a better striker on his feet. Um, uh, sorry, I'll break this down a little bit. I can't skim over it that fast. I know Andre is um he's he's coming off that loss to Albert Morales, uh, and then he was gonna fight uh for CS because he got cut and then he got signed again with the UFC. And then they have him here. And he was recently training at the Black Zillion. So I guess he's training at the Combat Club now. And then he's going against Alejandro Perez. Who, uh... His last fight also was against Albert Morales. And uh, he got a draw there. And then he beat Ian Entwistle. Beat the fuck out of him. And, uh, Scott Jor Jorgensen. Um... Tough fight to call, like I said, but I do favor Alejandro Perez because of the, just because you, you have to be able to, um, 
to accommodate yourself to the elevation to uh, you have to uh, acclimate yourself to the elevation um, and under the under super I, I can never say his name the edge sensation hasn't shown to do that so Alejandro Perez all day uh, I don't know guys 30 27 decision or 29 28 decision for uh, Perez here next up uh, I took a, a nice stab here I'll tell you straight up at the over um, we got Rashad Evans or Sam Al, but I'll tell you why uh, Rashad in his last fight was looking he looked real good at the weigh-ins and everything everyone was like oh man middleweight Rashad definitely top quality and everything uh, he's gonna own this division with his wrestling and his strikes he's still there he's a little bit shot man and um fighting a guy like Sam Elvey who packs a punch does worry me quite a li like a, a little tiny bit but uh he like I don't know that his last fight at 207 against Dan Kelly like uh Pretty controversial. Sorry, guys. Give me. Sorry guys, mic problem again, I, I had to fix that real quick, hopefully you guys can hear me nice and clear, I fixed the gain so it doesn't, my voice shouldn't be bouncing off your speakers or whatnot. I felt like it was doing that, but sorry, moving on here, uh, we do have Sugar Rashad Evans, like I said again, smiling Sam Melvy, and uh, yeah, so Rashad's... I don't know if he shot after that last performance. He was definitely uh, not pulling the trigger. That was something that uh, worried me quite a bit there. I thought he was going to actually eat up Dan Kelly. And then before that, it w he was uh, failing all these medicals against Tim Kennedy. And then he got, uh, he got knocked out by Glover. And then he lost to Ryan Bader. Now he's taking on Sam Elvey, and Sam Elvey, um, last, his last fight, he was on quite a win streak, he was on a four fight win streak, his last fight was against Tal Slater, so he got dominated in my opinion, but, uh, we, and before that he, uh, he beat Nate the Great Marquardt, Alex Nicholson, and if you, sorry, like, I'm not talking shit or anything, man, but if you can't knock out Alex Nicholson, like, after Joker put a beating on Alex Nicholson. Alex Nicholson isn't the greatest, well, uh, well, or mil middleweight, sorry. You should be able to knock him out. Smiling Sam looked very tentative in that fight. Like, he was scared to pull the trigger as well. Something that both these guys, I, I feel, that's why I took the over here. I took two units on the over with something later in the card. But, uh, I think both these guys are going to be super tentative. And if Rashad decides for anything he's gonna decide to wrestle I don't think he's gonna and smiling Sam both these guys like Rashad I guess has a little is a little bit chinny so that worries me but if they box Rashad is, is the better boxer smiling Sam is always looking for that one big bomb uh I took the over round here uh two units I believe yeah two units with something later in the card but uh yeah uh, for a pick wise, I'll go Rashad Evans. I think he gets the victory here. I think he gets a thirty twenty seven victory. Okay, right, we'll go with twenty nine twenty eight. Rashad Evans split decision. What? Let's go with some controversy. And then uh, next up, we got oh oh man, don't do that. I knew it was going to be fucking the worst right now. Fuck, fuck. Alright, we're back. Martin Bravo versus Humberto Bande. And uh, I'm very high on Martin Bravo, man. If you go watch his uh, 
his debut against Claudio Pelos. He's fucking top quality. So let me talk about this kid for a bit because I'm really juiced about him. Um, yeah. So he previously he fought at at lightweight, and he's he was so small for lightweight. He, this guy can make 135 easy, I think. But uh, he put away Claudio Pelos too, in in that uh, Claudio Pelos, whatever, however you say his name. Uh, he's got real crisp pants. He's like a mini Kane Velasquez, man. Let me tell you why. He's got real crisp pants. He's worked nice. He works very nice in the pocket. Good combos. Uh, he throws a little bit of a wild overhand right. Not a lot of accuracy on it, but with heavy power. Uh, great takedowns and good uh, takedown defense. Ba- and uh, his takedown defense, he's very balanced when getting taken down. Great get up game. He gets taken when he gets taken down. He gets up right away. Excellent cardio. Exactly. Like, that's the main thing with Mini Kane here. He uh, he's pretty like what I was saying. He's a good wrestler. Uh, great boxing and then a cardio machine. So my Bravo is like top quality. But let me keep going with him here. He sets a high pace. Excellent combos to put away uh, his his last opponent there and uh, Claudio Polish. Good, good uh, takedowns. Very well timed. He's a good wrestler, a uh, good grappler. Heavy hands and a great sub and ground game. Very heavy ground and pound. Uh, heavy and smart when he's on top. Good head movement when he's in the pocket. Great ground and pound. Good control on top. Relentless takedown. Sometimes leaves the opportunity of taking his back, like uh, letting his opponents take his back, but. Um, like when he when he escapes from a single leg, you'll see him do that a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, relentless takedowns, like I said. Sorry, I'm going over that one again. Uh, he's got great great cage wrestling, very tough, great chin, uh, very composed, active guard, and he got a TKO with leg kicks on uh, Tough Ladder in America, which he ended up winning the show. Uh, very, very high on him. Bande, on the other hand, has got good kicks. He's a counter striker. Favors his left hand. Good Muay Thai. Uh, he's got that heavy left hand. Bad takedown defense, which is a bad uh, recipe for disaster against Martin Bravo here. Um, sorry, let me keep going. He's unbalanced when striking. He strikes off his back foot a little bit too early or, or uh, late or not enough power off. When he when he is striking, it feels like he gets a little bit lucky with his strikes. Uh, gonna be open for a lot of takedowns with his stance. Closes his guard, and not active at all to try and get back up. Good sub skills. Uh, he loves the body kick, and he is chinny. And so I have four units on Martin Bravo. Uh, very confident in him to get the job done here. Uh, I've got him four units parlayed with somebody later in the card to win five. 0.17 units, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, 5.17 units. So I am very confident in that. Um, but yeah, let's move on to our next fight, guys. Alan Joban versus Nico Price. So uh, we'll start with uh, Joban here. Uh, coming off of a broken foot, which was wearing me until I did some research, and uh, he was okay. He, he did rehab, torn ligament. He just, I think he tore a ligament. I'm not sure, but he's all right. Uh, he's got a classic Muay Thai stance. That was the only thing that was worrying me in this fight when I was playing him, but uh, it doesn't worry me at all anymore. I was reading some stuff. I know he's he's feeling great. So uh, coming off a broken foot. Like I was saying, but he is feeling great. Classic Muay Thai stance. Very light on his feet. He's a legit fucking striker. Very well-timed strikes. Uh, good grappler. He trains at 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Very heavy-handed. Works to get back onto his feet. Good cage wrestling. Good in the clinch. Nice takedowns. Super clean and accurate combinations with a lot of power. Lots of power in both hands. Cuts angles very well. Doesn't back up into the cage ever since that two-minute fight. And has only lost to top-level guys in the UFC. Uh, and uh, unless you, like, top-level specialists, I would say. So guys like Tumanov, who's a striking specialist. Um, a Gunny, who's just, like, actually, but he's a mix, he's a complete mixed martial artist. But... He's a great grappler, but he he showed in that fight he's a complete mixed martial artist. 
But um, even Warley Alves, who's uh, just a really great grappler, you know, um, that's who he's lost to. And uh, I think Mike Biggie Rhodes, shout to Mike Biggie Rhodes, always always commenting on fights and shit on Twitter, my fucking boy. But uh, yeah, he's a uh, very fluid. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm re- yeah. And he the in that two minute off fight he he got outstruck for sure and then you saw but he's only like I said he's only lost the top level guys but that two minute off fight he was giving two minute off a run for his money at some point. And uh he's got a good chin. You guys saw that fight against Bilal Muhammad, Mike Perry, uh even uh I wouldn't say against Gunny because he got a drop, but uh, uh and he throws a very heavy straight left. If you see this guy's straight left, it is fucking dangerous. It will put you to sleep. It put Mike Perry on his ass a couple of times. So watch out for Joe Ban here. I got 3.25 units on Joe Ban. Um, let me see quick. To win how much? To win 2.07 units. Uh, Nico Price, he, he's, he's good. He's got some good and slick sub skills. He's a good wrestler. He's strong in the clinch. Good ground game. Nice elbows. Um, and ground and pound. He's, he's pretty heavy when he's on top. Good sub defense. Transitions nice. Smooth and on top. Uh, he's good at scrambles. But he's always looking to go to the floor. Uh, he's got some good head movement. Uh, he looked good against Brandon Thatch. Uh, I want to say actually Nico Price has good head movement. Good head movement maybe in the first round. Then he gets fucked up higher and he gets picked apart. Uh, when, he, when he tends uh, to get hit too, it's either when he gets hit or when the second round kicks in. This motherfucker gets sloppy as fuck, flat-footed. He gasses so quick, very telegraph strikes as the fight carries on. Was getting beat two rounds to none against Murano. Before the knockout, Murano knocked with Alex Murano was fucking picking him apart, and Joe Ban's gonna do the same thing, but he's not getting knocked out. Joe Ban, Murano got knocked out at the buzzer, and he was beating him two rounds to none. Nico Price needed a finish in that fight, and he got it. Uh, he's very predictable as the fight goes on with everything he does. So I have three point two five units on Joe Ban to win two point zero seven units. I'm very confident in that though. Um, next up, we got Alexa Grosso, sorry guys, we got Alexa Grosso, who is, uh, last week we were talking about first team all dime pieces, she's on first team all dime piece, 100%, first team all dime piece, she has to be on the team now, versus, uh, Ronda Marcos, uh, we'll start with, uh, Grosso here, uh, Grosso's got great boxing, good cardio, good wrestler, very clean boxing in the pocket. Uh, she rolls with her punches very nice. Uh, she's got great boxing defense in the pocket as well. Uh, she could finish. She's very strong in the clinch and throws great knees to the body while well in the clinch. Maintains distance well with her kicks. Good. Uh, she's got a good chin, throws gorgeous, diverse combos. She got all struck by Herrig, uh, though. Which, but Herrig's on like kind of, kind of a career resurgence, man. Herrig's been looking really nice. But uh, she, uh, Grosso's very quick, sharp, and great movement, great head position when uh, when she's in the clinch. She makes it very difficult for her, her opponent to take her down or gain any control of the clinch. Her head position's key when uh, when she's against the cage and stuff. Um. She's good at scrambles, has an active guard to work for a sub or to use it to get back up. She's got a good get-up game, look completely dominant against Heather Jo Clark, and she fights at the same pace for the whole fucking 15 minutes. Ronda Marcos, not a lot of volume, good takedowns, good judo, not very good sub defense. She's got a good ground game, tentative on the feet, not active when she's on bottom, keeps her hands low. I personally think she lost against Esparza. Like, uh, she almost got tapped at the second end of the second of that a second round of that fight, and uh, she she got, I thought I think she got beat up in the in the third round as well. But um, six days out, and uh, when I last checked, she was six days out, and she was still in Windsor, not Mexico City, to get to get acclimated, which is big, 
because uh, she looks like she gasses a little bit, and she's got some bad takedown defense. So I look for Alexa Grasso to completely dominate this fight. I got uh, quite a few plays on this fight. I got Alexa Grasso and Martin Bravo four units to win 5.7, 5.17 units. I got two units over rounds uh, for this fight, and over rounds Evans Alvi to win uh, 2.10 units. And then I got uh, one unit Grasso uh, and uh, Marcos over rounds and Hermanson to win 0.87 units. So I think this does go the distance, but I think it's a 30-27. Just go look at some of the fights Alexa Grasso has had in Invicta. The beating she puts on people is unbelievable. I think she beats the fuck out of Ronda Marcos. In Mexico City, uh, puts a very high pace on her, makes her grapple, and t- t- gasses her out, and then just puts a beating on her. So this is next to Martin Bravo, my most confident pick of the the night, I believe. That's why she is parlayed with him. Uh, four units to win 5.17 units. I think uh, this is Ronda Marcos' walking papers if she loses, and I think she does lose here, guys. So let's move on to the main event. Sergio Pettis versus Brandon, the assassin baby, Morano, and a lot of hype on Brandon Morano, and rightfully so, man, the guy's done very well recently, he got, he, he got that, uh, choke against, uh, Dustin Ortiz, if I remember correctly, he, before that was against Ryan Benoit, a uh, unanimous decision, and then, uh, he came in and he got that upset, that huge upset against Louis Smoka, but, uh, let, let me break this down real quick. Quick. Uh, yeah, he tends to get a bit wild on the feet. Brandon Moreno, uh, he's, he's susceptible to a lot of counters and takedowns. Pretty good at boxing. Tough as fuck. Forward pressure all the time. Good jiu-jitsu. Very opportunistic at taking the back. Um, and he's very slick at doing so. Like I said, against, uh, uh Louis Smoka, against, um, uh, against Dustin Ortiz, his gra- you you'll see his scrambles and t- like he's just he's a great grappler. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, sorry. Uh, but he's going against uh, Sergio Perez, uh, who's a black belt in Taekwondo, excellent and very technical striker, great counter striker, excellent kicks and maintains distance very well with his kick, beautiful movement, very fluid in and out of striking. Uh, striking range, very light on his feet. Wrestling has gotten way better. Landed two takedowns on Moraga, who's a two-time All-American uh, from the University of uh, uh, Arizona there. He landed two takedowns, and he stuffed six takedowns against John Moraga. He's been working with Izzy Martinez on wrestling, who I think is probably the best uh, wrestling coach there is in the game today. And he's a re- he's been in Mexico City for... Uh, over a week now so he's getting acclimated strong in the clinch uses guillotine very well to defend takedowns very quick hands and kicks crisp combinations in the pocket and i think he stops this hype train i got three units on uh i got three units on pettis here to win 4.5 units i think it goes a distance though so i have uh 1.25 units over rounds on this fight and her mansion to win 1.58 units so I'm, I'm pretty juiced, guys. I think this is a, a pretty good card overall. Not as good as, maybe not as good as a card as on paper as the other ones, but we'll see Saturday. Maybe this is one of the best cards of the year. Who knows? This can be one of the best cards. You guys never know, right? Um, I went to UFC 206 last year, and uh, everyone was talking shit how it was going to be such a bad card, and it was it came out to be one of the best cards of the year. So you never know with these cards. Uh, I always like to give them a chance, and I'm a huge fan, so why I'm going to be watching it anyways. And uh, I do hold every UFC to high expectations, and I think this is going to deliver, guys. So let's go over my bets right before we leave, because uh, we won't be seeing, seeing the Seb show for about a month till uh, Stefan Strew fights uh, Alexander Volkov there. Uh, Got some plays of mine there, but uh, and uh, but in the meantime, there will be interviews um, coming out probably uh, this weekend, next weekend, and uh, probably the weekend after that as well. 
But let's go over my bets real quick. So we got 3.25 units on Joban to win 2.07 units, 3 units on Pettis to win 4.5 units, 4 units on Martin Bravo and uh, Alex Grasso to win uh, 5.17 units, 2 units on the over rounds for Grasso and the over rounds for Evans to win 2.10 uh, units, uh, 0.25 units Ortiz and Hermanson to win 0.27 units, 0.25 units over rounds, uh, Roberto Sanchez and Joseph Morales and Hermanson to win 0.29 units, 1 unit Grasso over rounds and Hermanson to win 0.87 units and 1.25 units over rounds Pettis uh, and Hermanson to win 1.58 units. So I do think this is going to be a great card. I do have uh, eight plays overall guys looking for a nice big profit and a bounce back We definitely need a bounce back. We're on like a three or four event losing streak So maybe even more than that guys, but fuck Because uh, of the Dana White I took Philip Hawes in the Dana White Tuesday night contender series and he got knocked the fuck out by Marquez but um, Yeah I'm pretty juiced to watch this one this Saturday guys But till next time Till the, well, not till a month now, but till the next interview to, that I post. But the next breakdown will be a month from now. And till then, peace out, guys. Let's cash these motherfucking bets. Let's get this. Seb Show. We're out. Peace.